we're live. We are live. We're live. We're live. We are live. Oh my God, we're live. Hello. Where are we? Hello. Hello. <laughs> so now what do we do? Are people, are people looking at us right now? They're coming in. <clears throat> coming in hot. Oh, they're coming in hot. Hi, we're Godsmack. In case you haven't seen yet. That says God smash. Oh. God smash. There come the lights. We like that. We like you too. Well, look at this. A bunch of people asking us stuff. Oh, look at all the little hearts. Thank you for the little oh. hearts. Oh. Those are those <laughs> those eyes? Yeah, those are hearts. Us? Each one of them are for you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Make you feel fuzzy inside. Leave us a question then. Okay. Um, where are you guys right now? We are in uh, Lakeland, Florida, and we're doing live production rehearsals for the upcoming festivals. This is part one of what we have scheduled for our world tour. <clears throat> so this is kind of really like a promo tour to talk about what we have coming up in July with Shinedown and um, to uh, let you guys know about the new record that's coming out. Shane, shut up. We're on Facebook Live. You can't even click the sticks. Tell you. Drum tech to shut up. Yeah, watch it there. You told me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you want it live, you got live. So yeah, that's where we are right now. We're in Florida. We're on day three. Day four? Three. Day Monday, three. Tuesday, Wednesday, third day of rehearsals. And today we get to blow shit up. Ba -ba -boom. If, you got, if we could actually keep this running longer, you guys would see some live pyro going off soon. Big bombs. Um, what was your favorite scene to what? shoot? What? What was your favorite scene to shoot in the Bulletproof music video? Oh, what was the favorite scene in the Bulletproof video? Oh, I think what got the biggest laugh is probably Robbie in the King Diamond outfit. <laughs> I think it was the Squally Stance. Yeah, that, that was my favorite. Everybody laughs at that. That's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. Well, you could dance, huh? Well, my manly physique and, and what they put on the girls. Took one for the team there. Ladies You took one for two. I took three. I, did, I didn't want to do it. I took three. You think they can hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? We'll answer. Someone right now say if you can hear us. Why is it? Is it scrolling? <laughs> Stop. It's used up. Can you it was, hear us? Don would tell us. Um, can we expect to hear new songs at the festival shows? Can we expect to hear new songs at the festival shows? No. <laughs> Yeah. We're just going to do everything from the demos before we will sign. Of course, you're going to hear new songs. <laughs> yes. We're promoting a new record. It's going to be, there's going to be new songs. Okay. Um, what's your favorite song off When Legends Rise? Mine is the title track, When Legends Rise. Mine's I Have a Song. Which you haven't heard yet. Uh huh. Uh huh. What's your favorite song? I love them all equally. He loves them all equally. I'll tell you what song I don't like. You want to hear what song I don't like? Should we promote like that? I fucking hate it. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think my song, my favorite song is what we feel is going to be the next single, which is a song called Unforgettable. And um, you guys will be hearing all that stuff on Friday when the record comes out. But Unforgettable is a pretty big, fat, anthemic song. And, uh, and while we're talking about that, I also want to say... You know, we, we see all the posts. We don't. We can't always answer whether it's Instagram or whatever. But we do um, see in all the uh, questions and a couple things I want to clear up while we're here. And you can pass along these messages in case someone's late or didn't get to see this part. Um, one is you don't need to keep sending us like, oh, I can't believe that uh, that. Canada is not on the tour yet or that South America is not on the tour yet or things like that. We're coming everywhere. I promise you this is going to be a massive world tour. We are basically starting these promo uh, festivals now, which will run till mid July. And then from mid July until uh, the fall of 2019, we are doing a massive world tour and we plan on doing the States, Canada, Europe, South America, Japan, Australia, Australia, like it's all going to happen. So just be patient. 
and we will update the tour dates as we get them. But right now we're still negotiating what venues to play and things like that. So you just gotta trust us. We're coming everywhere. Take a chill, Phoenix. Yeah. We're coming. We're gonna come. Yeah. I'm not gonna forget about Phoenix. Especially South America. South America is one of our biggest targets right now because we're getting a lot of um, emails about South America and we haven't been there yet and we know that. So we're working really hard with our booking agent to make sure that South America is on the grid for this tour. But know that this thing isn't, you know, just what you're seeing for tour dates right now. This is going to run until the end of 2019. So we're coming. What do we got next? Um, where can they get the new album on Friday? Uh, the new record, I believe, is going to be everywhere. Wherever they sell CDs, if it's still like in Walmart or Best Buys, I don't know who's still carrying product. You'll be able to get physical product there along with the, the vinyl. We, we actually did this record on vinyl. Um, and then there's a little thing called iTunes, too, and it'll be available there. Yep, iTunes, digital downloads, you know, physical product, all that stuff. Anywhere that you can normally get any other piece of music, you'll be able to get our record. Um, are you excited to tour with Shine Down? Yes. <laughs> we toured with them, what, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever, when they first came out. And, you know, we're, we're, we like them personally. We like their music. It's going to be an amazing tour. And I would recommend coming if you're in Jersey and Cape Cod. Yeah. Yeah, we went out with them a while ago, and it worked really well. And over the years, we've really developed a really good friendship. So we're excited because um, I'm super proud of those guys. I've watched them grow over the years into an amazing headlining band themselves. And so far, the fans seem to really like this package. The promoters love this package. And we feel I'm going to be a little egotistical for a second, a bit bold. But I'm going to go out there and reach out and say this could possibly be, no, this will be the best rock tour of 2018. So we've worked really hard um, with that band to be able to have a very big production for both bands. They're going to have a certain look and style, and um, we're going to have a certain look that we're putting together for production. And um, and it should be really fun. And Shane, if you don't shut up, sorry. I'm going to make you leave forever. <laughs> it's funny. I, I told him to change my drum head to work best. <laughs> now he gets yelled at. Quit it. Yeah, festival's two days away. I know, but we're going to do one more set, by the way. I wish you guys could be live and watching this. We've already no, because then they won't come to the show. We go hard, though, Sit man. home and eat cupcakes and popcorn. Yesterday we rehearsed for nine hours, roughly. <laughs> you know, and so we go hard. It's going to be tight. Tight as a snake. Maybe the young kids on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How would you describe the new sound? What? How is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. What are you doing? Oh, you're on your pedals, man. Oh. Hey, no comments over there from the peanut gallery. What? How did you it was an accident. I fell. Let's, let's remember the chain of command here. How would you describe the new sound on the new album? Sounds like Godsmack, more mature, more modern sounding, it's still pretty fast or tough sounding. To me, it sounds like the first record more than any of other things that I've done. Yeah, that's another thing I want to address. You know, we knew that when we decided to make this record that um, that we were going to be changing things up a little bit. We were going to go for a bit more of a melodic sound at times, but there's a lot of people that are trying to judge the new Godsmack from hearing one song, and I promise you it's impossible because this record and listen to me when I tell you this, is packed with so many different styles of music. There is definitely stuff on here that we wanted to explore and experiment with that's a bit more broad, a bit more melodic. Um, there's a lot of huge, heavy songs on here, and there's a lot of stuff that's even going to cater to the core audience that we've built for the Godsmack fans. Um, so my advice to you is before you judge a record, um, spend some time with the record first and see. I mean, obviously, everyone's not going to like every single song like any other artist, um, but you're going to have your favorites. But for sure, there's, there's a lot to choose from. And, um, you know, we just want to be able to reach out and, and uh, expand the fan base as well. And we're hoping that you guys come along for the journey. Um, 
And for those of you who absolutely are just straight up metal heads, then this may not be the band for you, but that's okay. We really proud of this record and um, we feel like it's probably the best record we've ever written. And I think you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised when you hear the rest of it. So, and every time we make records, out. we have like tried to change and not make the same record over and over anyway. You know, the yeah. core record was a bluesier record to, to us, and the intent was that. And so the last record I felt was more high energy or punk attitude, even, you know. And so every time we try and change, this time if you recognize it, then thank you. Yeah. Hope you like it. We're even introducing the fir first ballad on this record that um, I wrote acoustically. It's called a song called Under Your Scars. Um, and I transposed it onto a piano to see what it sounded like. And it actually became out. It came out pretty big and beautiful, and it's a really strong song, and it grows and grows and grows. So, again, my, my advice is just um, spend some time with this record. And when you get it on Friday, if you're coming to the first show, <clears throat> definitely spend some time with it because we're going to be playing some new material. And the more you are familiar with it, the, the better time you're going to have with the show. <clears throat> um, how long did you work on this new record? Uh, about a Two year. Years. <laughs> uh, it's about a year. Um, I personally started writing a year ago last February for it. The guys were in Florida and they were writing separately. I was writing separately. And then I, I worked with um, uh, some outside writers to just get some different ideas and mix it up a little bit. Um, so the whole process probably took about a year to write and record, right? Maybe a little over a year. Uh, this one comes from Carmen. If you could have dinner with an artist who is no longer with us, who would it be? For me? Oh my God, I was going to say something right away, but now I don't know. There's a lot of good ones. Oh, maybe Jimi Hendrix? Want to have lunch with Jimmy? Yeah. All right. Got a few questions. Uh, <laughs> Jim Morrison. Wow. I would jump with him. No, no. If you want, had lunch with someone that wasn't here, who oh. would you have dinner with? Keith Moon. Because <laughs> I know it would be a liquid lunch, baby. I'd be right off the wagon. <laughs> You're sober though. He said it'd be off the wagon. The wagon <laughs> it's only one day. Yeah. <laughs> John Bonham. Oh, that's one of my guys. He'd be falling off the wagon. <laughs> You'd be having a liquid lunch oh, too. Yeah. Um, oh man, there's so many good ones. I think it would be a toss up between Ray Charles and Amy Winehouse. Ray Charles. Would be I really <laughs> both of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I just I just love old blues music and uh, Amy was I just really really loved her and uh, just think she left a little bit too soon she didn't leave us with enough music so might be Amy well for different reasons we would go the female element because lunch leads to the bad anyway so I would say Wendy or Williams for sure. <laughs> Um, Leslie would like to know what you do in your downtime. I, I'm usually working. I don't have downtime, but you guys can probably answer that one better. <laughs> yeah, I'd say music. I mean, everybody was like, you know, music, that's what you do. So on your downtime, what do you do? And I'm like, music. I mean, you know, it's, it's my life. I mean, I'm not playing Godsmack and solo work. It's just the way it is. All of us don't rest. You know, we like Harley Davidsons, we like dirt bikes, we like, uh, <coughs> me and Tony like PlayStation. And, but uh, it's pretty visible though. I think you can kind of look online and see what we all do in our spare time. I mean, people know I play poker. Shannon plays poker. Poker in the butt. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was a 14-year-old. What oh, are you doing? <laughs> Your daughter's watching oh. this. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I almost... Sorry, Nakaya. <laughs> um, Shannon, how was your B day yesterday? It was great. My beautiful, smart, awesome daughter came and uh, took me out to dinner with Bobby last night. And we had good sushi in Lakeland, Florida. Amazing. And of course, you know, we rehearsed for nine hours, and that was lots of fun. <clears throat> it was a, I couldn't have asked for a better B day. Well, I had a girl. I uh, like girls. I, okay. I, like, I, like, I, I like a girl. <laughs> Tape below my girl. Tape. <laughs> <laughs> Tape, please. Um, what
what new song do you look forward to playing live? Do you not look forward to playing? No, what are you looking forward to playing live? I'm looking forward to playing all of them. Yeah. I really, I really like the set so far that we have. Um, it's like I said, it's built off a variety of old and new, and <clears throat> I think it's going to be a pretty powerful show. I'm actually looking forward more into getting into the live tour, the the world tour, because um, sometimes the festivals they only give you so much time, 60 minutes or whatever, and I just think we have a bigger show than that. Plus, we have a brand new production that we're doing for the world tour, which is way even cool than this. Um, and this is pretty cool, and it's going to get us to the festivals, and it's a big look. But the world tour, man, off the hook. Someone here, uh, it says, Sully and Shannon have tattoos. Do Robbie and Tony have tattoos? Not, not a one. <laughs> not one. And why? Because it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I saw these guys. They told me it hurts. Yeah, anybody tells you they don't hurt, the liar. I think it's something, you know. Yeah, show your face, Paris. Peek in there. No. She's reading the questions. <laughs> it starts young, you know, the tattoo thing. She's so reading the that's... questions. Like, Come here. No. Come here. Yeah, let them see who you are. Look at it. It's Paris. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Mm. I didn't want to wait. She can't read so good. <laughs> she needs glasses. <laughs> Um, what's the hardest part about recording a new record? I'm not even going to answer that because I hate recording. <laughs> I don't think it's hard at all. It's just, you know, you, you're, you're in a, such a controlled environment where live, you can just let the eye dots out. You know, in the studio, you're so focused and, and uh, everything is under the microscope. Everything has to be perfect. It's going to go down on vinyl or on digital or whatever it is. It's going to be out there forever. So you want to get the best that you can do at that very moment. And, you know, and if you're not, like, completely in the mood, then uh, it's hard to capture the feeling. So the hardest part for me is just getting into the headspace. <laughs> Phenomenon. We don't have fun. Phenomenon. <laughs> oh, Sully, are you going to dress like your cousin on stage? Uh, no, that's that's not how I dress. <laughs> and I don't appreciate you talking bad about Pasquale. He's a good guy. He means well. He's just a little old school. He's too hyper. Too many espressos. <laughs> espressos. <laughs> Uh, Been saying espresso all my life. It's always like, no, it's espresso. Just last week or something. Like that. Espresso. Espresso. Pasquale called me that. <clears throat> what do you got, Paris? What are you I'm reading, reading over them. there? I'm trying to pick a good one. I can see a whole bunch. You want me to read some? Yep. All of them say, Can't see that far. How did you think of your band name? So she's going past those guys. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um... <clears throat> What? What's the longest that it took you to write a song, and what's the shortest that it took you to write a song? Are these coming from Caroline? Caroline, your questions stink. <laughs> stink like your hair. <laughs> they stink. Uh, what advice would you give to younger bands? I there's only one piece of advice I, I give younger bands that ask me how to get to where we are or somewhere in this industry is just hang in there if you really love what you do it's all about timing and a lot of luck and um, usually the ones that survive and work through all the tough times and keep standing up and moving forward and trying again and trying again and trying again those usually are the ones that get an opportunity um, for the stars to line up and get a shot at a record deal or something like that but <clears throat> it doesn't happen overnight Write, write good music. That's what it's all about. Write songs. Write songs. Yeah. Even as young as you are, whatever you can't, you know, you can't learn unless you do it. Write songs. Mm -hmm. Write write shit. Faster. Come here. Come here. We have something we need to ask you guys right now. Hold your comments for one second. Everybody, stop. Time out with the comments. 
Do you guys remember Uncle Fester? Look at, look at, look at Uncle Fester. So here's the deal. Six months ago, we made a bet with him that he couldn't even trim the hair or anything, nothing, except for right over his lip. And now he wants to shave it. And one of our friends offered him 500 bucks if he could get to one year, which would be six more months. And then the crew opted to throw in 100 bucks each if he went What's another to, six months? to a year. Yeah. One year total. So he can make like 1500 bucks if he waits six more months and doesn't trim it. So do we shave it or do we let it grow? That's what we want to know. I'll shave it live right here on Facebook. I don't even care. If I had the clippers with me, I'd shave it right now in front of them. Bald, everything gone. What does that say? Are we coming back to when are you coming back to Maine? Yes. Yeah, we have to just you have to keep an eye on the tour dates. We already answered that. We're coming everywhere. I can't see that far. <laughs> Do you want me to move it close? Sully and Shannon. Have we all ever been married? No. Yes. No. Yes. No. <laughs> uh, How many new songs are on the set list? That's one. Yeah, we won't talk about the set list because to me that blows the element of surprise. And as a fan of music myself, whenever I go to see a show, I like the element of surprise. And so um, I'm sure you're going to know the set list after the first show because everybody videotapes it, puts it on YouTube. But maybe we're just going to keep changing it up. So. Come. Yeah, even if I'm going to go to a concert, I won't go online and, and, and look at what they played already. Because I want to be surprised. I, yeah. I want to know, oh man, I hope they're going to play you know, something else. Um, we got to shave it on stage. <laughs> <laughs> shave it on stage? Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll shave it on stage. Well, that would be just awesome. You guys can throw a little blues. <laughs> Phil from Pantera shaved my head on stage. Oh. Back in the 80s when I had long hair. It's like the Justin Bieber. Oh, my God. Look at my daughter's face. All three of us. What else do um, we got? What do we Tony, got? Tony, who's your major influences on guitar? Uh, Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Randy Rhodes, Jesus, Lauren, everyone that was good. Do you like Joe Bonamassa? Yeah. Awesome. Right? Yeah, yeah, he's a fantastic person. Love that dude. There's so many. Uh, the list is long. It's hard. I like Richie yeah. Blackmore. I like Michael Schenker. Schenker. I like Johnny Winter. I like Tony Gambola. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm going to pick some questions yeah, up myself. Pick Bring that thing in a little closer. <laughs> no, no, leave it on the table. Just scooch. Oh, okay. Hi. Feeling a little intimate with you. Let's see. What do we got here? Um, I'd love a happy birthday from my boys. My birthday is 427. Okay. Call us on 427. Happy birthday. <laughs> what else we got here? band missed the younger earlier days oh that's a good question I do sometimes I do because sometimes I ride around Boston and I look at the places that used to be cool places like the Rathskeller and Bun Ratties and uh, the Paradise and whatever some of them aren't even there anymore but I do miss some of the early days because it was just a very unique time playing in small clubs with your friends and that kind of stuff um, so my answer would be yes to that. But I also like playing bigger venues. So if you can collaborate with any anymore. band, if you can collaborate with any band, who would it be? Ooh. Is that as Godsmack or is that individually? 
that could be two different answers there. Let's answer both. If we were to collaborate with another band, I I wouldn't mind doing a big old fat jam with Dave Grohl and the Whoa, boys from Foo yeah. Fighters. I'd kind of love that. Speaking of which, maybe all you guys should start um, messaging Grohl <laughs> and tell him that you can really take Godsmack on the road because it would be a pretty big fat show, Godsmack and the Foo Fighters. Plug, plug. <clears throat> Call Dave Grohl. Is there going to be a drum duel? There's always a drum battle. There's always a battle to be drummed. We're actually working on some new stuff for it, so drum battle will happen every time. Have any of you guitar players used the shred neck practice guitar? No. No. What is that? I don't even know what that is. Why not? I, I, I think it's regular. Seen. I think it's just like a, neck, uh, a small piece of the neck that you practice on. But yeah. Why not just use a regular guitar? I think if you're on an airplane or something, or on the toilet. To practice, I mean, on a toilet. Yeah. If you're in a place, small area, though. What if you're in a closet, there's a good weapon. What if you're in a closet? If you can punch someone in the face, who would it be? Oh, come on. Ooh. We're not that answering violent. that. Yeah, dude, we love. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Do you remember playing Shocky the Nashville? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 820 shot time still going strong. Yeah. Sometimes Shannon doesn't a drink couple anymore. Jumped off. He don't drink anymore. <laughs> yeah. A couple of them jumped. <laughs> we fell off the section. Um, they're going so fast I can't read them. Slow down. Uh, no, that's not a good question. <laughs> I'm not gonna say. They don't even know who it was. <laughs> all like, oh, all our questions suck. Okay. Oh, it says, Shannon, you're extremely sexy. <laughs> Shannon, how long is is it? How long is it, Shannon? Real long. Yeah. Shannon, you're hot. Shannon, Shannon, He's Shannon. That up. That's <laughs> <laughs> Who are you most excited to see at the upcoming festivals? I'm looking forward to seeing Ozzy with Zach, with Zach Wild. I think it's going to be fun to watch. I would have watched Tool, but when I met Maynard, he was a dink, so I'm not going to watch Tool. <laughs> I'd like to meet Danny Carey. Danny's cool, though. Yeah, we met him. The drummer's cool. The band's cool. Can we play with him? Just Maynard. Just Maynard. Yeah, yeah. Can you let us in Europe? Did you say that live? <laughs> it is. I think. Oops. <laughs> Oops. And your time's almost up. It's 534. We have a couple more minutes, I think, they said. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Vegas. We're coming. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, coming. Uh, Foo Fighters are playing at Fenway. Let's make it happen. I actually did a song with Grohl at Fenway Park. I did Screws Out, Miles Cooper. But I want to go on tour with him, so start messaging Grohl. He knows me. Tell him I told you to message him. He'll, he'll answer you. Are you still running Sully? Yes. See, do a Godsmack Foo Fighters tour. Told you. Who's the last band you actually paid to go see? The police. I think it was Adele. I think I see you. Yeah, I paid for Dell. No, I didn't. I got three tickets from my friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't pay to go to shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of the perks. <laughs> yeah, damn, you know, you get in. All right, anything else here that looks good? Uh, hey, Shannon, I can tell them stories back in the day, but and then the thing went away, so there you go. I don't know what it says. <laughs> Range coming there. Uh, what else we got here? What's your favorite song from the new album? We already talked about that. What's your favorite place to eat in LA? No one, no I don't one know the names of the places. Where do we like to eat in LA? What's the name of that oh, Indian uh, restaurant? Well, Sushi, or, uh, Sushi Dan. 
this great sushi in LA. And then, of course, Nobu in Malibu is amazing. Hey, this is a good question I want to answer. <clears throat> Someone asked if we're going to play the entire first record on tour because of the 20th year anniversary thing. So I'm going to squash this right now because this is the answer to that. At first, we were really hyping up to go out and do something for the 20th year anniversary and play the entire first record live. But that had to change because of some different personal reasons. But more importantly, when this record was finished, and as you guys will hear soon enough, we really felt like this is a very important record and it's a very big record and it's a really strong record. And so we decided to not shadow that with this 20th year anniversary thing. It's something that we're just kind of celebrating um, privately behind closed doors. And we're gonna revisit that thought on the 25th year anniversary or possibly on the 20th year of the Awake album and maybe do a hybrid or something like that. So um, stay tuned for that. But on this tour, it's gonna be a, a blend of all all Godsmack, everything Godsmack. Wow, there's a lot of hearts on that one. Hearts is a great place. Love you guys so much. Love you too, you guys. I'm going away real quick. Oh, do you still overload the washing machine? <laughs> what was it like in the first DVD? Do you still overload the washing machine? Yeah. <laughs> I never learned. Only when we're smoking pot. <laughs> um, seen you guys eight times. Awesome. That's not a question. <laughs> Moving on. Um, I don't see any question marks. Oh, this is a good one. What was the first show you ever went to in your life? Mine was uh, Shiley Acres in West Virginia, and the band was Kicks. Oh, Kicks. And they were called The Shoes at the time. It was a real long time ago. But my first real like, concert of a signed band was Judas Priest on point of entry with Iron Maiden opening the Paul Diano on the Killers tour. Changed my life. Ozzy Osbourne with Randy Rhodes. Yes. Wow, that's cool. Fred Nugent. <clears throat> you see, that was your first one, Nugent? That's awesome. Wow. Um, I think mine was the Joe Perry Project. I think. I can't remember. Pretty. I think it was Joe Perry. Yeah. Yeah, because it was right around the time where Aerosmith had split up. Where was it? And I seen Aerosmith too. I seen Tyler pass out right on his face after the first song. But, but Joe Perry wasn't was the band at the time. It was like 82 or something like that, I think. 1982. Uh -huh. That's not showing your age, is it? <laughs> no, Joe Perry Project was in Lowell, Massachusetts at the Lowell Auditorium. Yeah, too, in Worcester. 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 What else you got, Paris? Any good questions in here? Um, <laughs> I think we have to wrap it up because yeah. we have to go back to rehearsal. And we, we haven't do. even eaten dinner yet. We're hanging out with the fans, though, but that's fun. <laughs> Someone just said free bird. Um, let's see what else we got. I don't see any question marks. I just see a lot of hell yeah. Shannon's hot. He's hot. How long is it? <laughs> That's it. There's no more question marks. This one right here. So do you plan on writing another book? I do at some point. I just don't know how it ends yet because I'm still living in my life. <laughs> I don't know what the ending is. <laughs> but it might be a while. Oh, there's a bunch of question marks on that one. They did that on purpose because I've been saying this. Do you all see me? No. You can see me on a computer screen. And man, I've been coming to Louisville. Same answer. We're coming everywhere. We just have to keep an eye on the tour dates. Um, yeah, I don't see any more question marks. Wait, there's one more here. Shannon, you are a god on the drums. You guys going to do the drum solo duet thing again? Yes, we are. We are going to do that. Thank you. And yes, we are. It's fun to play with Shannon. Shannon played in Black Sabbath. Do you want to tell me a little story about Black Sabbath? I do. I played for Sabbath. I knew Robert from uh, Metallica. At the time he was suicidal. And, Robert uh, Trujillo? Robert Trujillo. And he had seen me play in, the, in another band. My friendship was great friends of Michael to Joe and they just went to Robert. Next thing you know, Mike Gordon had to go and play with Faith No More. And Ozzy had blown his voice out on a show. So 
I got the call. I was actually the second guy to get the call. The first guy was Josh Freeze from a perfect circle, and he chose to play with Devo instead of Bryce Davis. And I was, I got to meet him later. And, hey man, thank you. Why would you choose Devo over Sabbath? You know, and he's like, Devo was my Sabbath, <laughs> which is weird, right? He's a weird dude. I love Josh, but uh, and so yeah, I got to live my rock and roll dream and play with us. So here's what we're going to do <clears throat> to wrap it up. We're going to remind you guys one more time who's ever listening. This tour is going everywhere. So don't worry if you don't see your city, your state, or your country on the board yet. It's going to be there. We promise you we're trying to get to every place we can in this world. It's only four of us, and we can only do it so quickly. So, But the goal is, and we've been having serious meetings with our booking agents, to make sure that we touch every country, every city that we can. And, and um, if you find that it's not coming close enough, but it's within a range, three or four hour range, you might want to plan to make the drive just in case we don't get to the exact city. Um, the other thing is we really want to thank you guys for all the support. <clears throat> um, please go and get this record. We uh, have a lot of competition out there with the pop world and whatever. I would love to see the rock fans take charge again one more time and go out there and um, put us in a position where um, we can maybe come out with a number one record. That would be cool. Um, but more importantly, um, spend some time with this record. It's a really great record. I know you guys are going to love it, and I promise you there's something on there for everybody. So, um, you know, flip through it, see what your favorites are, and uh, keep in touch with us. And... Um, it's coming out Friday, so just start spreading the word. Pass around the Bulletproof video and um, pass on the word to uh, go and get the record on Friday. And we'll see whoever we're going to see in, what is it, Rockville, the first one? Rockville, Fort Rock. Jacksonville, Florida is Rockville. And then we Fort have Rock. Fort Lauderdale is Fort Rock. Yep. And Carolina Rebellion. Carolina Rebellion on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. Rock on the Range. Rock on the Range. Yeah. Rock, Lahoma. Rock, Lahoma. There's a lot of rock festivals going on. But, um, yeah, so we're going to be out there promoting the new record, promoting the new tour that's coming up. We want to say what's up to Shine Down. We're excited to tour with you guys. It's going to be a great tour. Um, and go get the record. Make sure that you line up. Get it. Pass on the word. Get everybody to buy this record. We want to come in in first position. Big, big. We want to go big. Go big or go home. Right now we have to go back to practice, so thanks for hanging out with us. Peace out.